In October 1916, the First World War was in a period of some of its fiercest fighting, the Battle of the Somme. Starting on 1st of July and ending on 18th November, the Allied offensive is well remembered for the huge loss of life and the first use of the tank. What is less known is that the battle also saw the first operational military weather forecast by the Met Office. Um, so at the start of World War I, the Met Office offered its services to the Army, um, but they were informed that the Army doesn't go to war with umbrellas. Um, by 1915, the position had changed slightly. Uh, we started running what was universally known as Meteor RE, which was the Met Office in the field in France, and they were providing services to the fledgling Royal Flying Corps, observations for the Royal Artillery, and assistance with gas forecasting, both in providing uh, forecasts for us launching um, attacks and in warning of when attacks may be coming from the German side. But they still weren't doing actual military forecasts. That came about in the summer of 1916 with the ongoing Battle of the Somme. Uh, they faced above average rainfall in August, which combined with the high water table in the, in the Somme floodplain uh, and basically created the trench conditions that we all know. And as the battle dragged on through towards the winter, the military commanders realised that they had no choice, they were going to have to look at the importance of, of the weather in military planning. And out of that came the very first military forecast, which was produced by Ernest Gold, and that was produced on the 24th of October 1916. The initial forecasts were actually very brief, um, they did become more detailed with time, but they were supported with charts, synoptic charts, which were specifically for Northwest Europe, um, and those uh, had synoptic forecasting on and observations and brief textual forecasts. They were very useful, but because they were hand-drawn, they couldn't be shared very wild widely. Um, however, they then introduced clay copiers into the field, which meant that they could share them much more widely um, among the Allied forces. And that information was actually so useful in planning for one of the few advances during the Battle of Passchendaele that Meteor RE, the Met Office in the field, received a telegram from one of the senior commanders of the Second Army actually thanking them for their accurate forecasting, which had proved so useful during the battle. 